All right, one thing we're gonna have to do is read a lot of graphs, right? Like in Kinemax, we did a lot of graphs. Forces might do some graphs, but work and energy, also gonna have a lot of graphs. And just recall how we look at graphs. We look at the Y value, the slope, and the area. And the slope is the change in the Y variable, and the area is Y times the change in the X variable, whatever those axes tend to be. Okay, and so let's look at what happens when you have a force versus displacement graph, right? Force versus, say, position graph or something like that. Force versus displacement could be position here. Doesn't really matter. So if you think about the, the area here, one thing, the area would be the Y variable times the change of the X variable, right? And that sh you should recognize that that is our work calculation. Okay, so if we ever see a force versus position graph, the, the area under the curve is going to be the work. And that's really, really common. They're just going to tell you that all the time. But I want you to be able to understand where that comes from. Don't just memorize what all the graphs do. Think about like, oh, y times the change in the x, that's going to give you work, right? That is our work calculation. So let's go through a problem where we have to use that, right? So we have a 2.2 kilogram object moves along a straight line. The net force acting on the object is with versus displacement is given before here. So therefore the Y value, just go through the process. Y value is going to be our force. Our slope is going to be the change in the Y variable over the change in the X variable. And this doesn't have any meaning. And our area is going to be the Y variable times the change in the X variable. And that's going to be our work. And that's really important to understand because I know I just told it to you like 30 seconds ago that this was true. But when you're taking a test, it's not going to be 30 seconds and you don't necessarily, they're not going to tell you that, hey, by the way, this is a work and energy problem. This is just, they're going to give you a graph and you have to infer what to do. And that's why this process is really important. We know we can look at the Y value to get the force. We can also look at the area to understand the work. So as we're reading the prompt, as we're going through the steps, we can then figure out which one of those are relevant to what's being asked. The object starts from rest, so that we know the initial velocity is zero. The, at displacement x equals zero, and at time t equals zero, and is displaced at 20 meters, which you can see here. Determine each of the following. The acceleration of the particle when the displacement is six meters. So six meters right here. What can we do? Well, we know the work, and we know the y value. Which one of these is going to help with the acceleration is actually the y value, right? We just use f net equals ma because this is a graph of F net, because they told it was the net force, right? This is F net here. That means the Y variable is F net. So we could say like, oh, the Y variable is four. The mass is 0 0.2 times the acceleration. So the acceleration is four divided by 0 0.2, which is uh, 20 meters per second squared. Boom. B, the time taken for the object to displace the first 12 meters. So how long is this going to take here? Okay, 12 meters. Now you might say like time, Let's see, work Work has nothing to do with time. That was the one thing about work is it didn't really have anything to do with time. It had to do with energy, right? Work is a change in energy. So we have displacement, we have time. The only thing I know that involves time at this point is our kinematic process. And that only applies when the acceleration is constant. Is the acceleration constant? Well, because the force is constant over the 12 meters, yes, the acceleration is constant. So we're allowed to use our kinematic equation process, right? I'm always going to double check that. Don't just say, I'm going to use kinematic equations. Remember, it requires the acceleration to be constant. The acceleration we know is 20. The time we would like to know, we know it starts at rest. And, uh, oh, we're displacing the first 12 meters. Look, we have three pieces of information. We're going to use this kinematic equation to solve it. So this is 12 is equal to, this is 0, because the initial velocity was 0. 1 half times 20 times t squared which is 10t squared is equal to 12. So 12 divided by 10, take the square root, would equal t. And so we're going to do square root of 12 divided by 10, and that's going to give us 1.1 uh, seconds. Okay. C, the amount of work done by the net force displacing the first 12 meters. Ah, OK, we're just going to do the area calculation here, right? the area here. From the, the, Note they say the first 12 meters. So this is a rectangle. Right, so you're just going to say 4 times 12, which is going to be 48. Now, you might have been like, and that's 48 joules, by the way. You might have been like, can't I just do F times delta X? That's fine if the force is constant, right? That's going to give you the area. But as the force varies, you can't just multiply these two because the, the force is changing. So then this F times delta X is really like an area calculation. The speed of the object at 12 meters. Okay, so now we want to know how fast it's going. There's two ways we could have done this. 
We could have, because we had this here, we could have used this, and we could have just done V equals V0 plus AT, right? Because I, I already did it for that 12, um, and I know this is 1.1. Or, or I could use um, this equation, v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a delta x, because um, maybe I just want to use this equation here. So that would be v is equal to the square root of 0 squared plus 2 times 20 times 12. And that would have answered that question. Could have just done it with kinematics. And that would be give me... Uh, 21.9 meters per second. But let's do it because we calculated the work. Let's do work as the change in energy. So we know 48 joules is how much work it is. That's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, right? And the initial kinetic energy was zero because we started from rest. So this is one half times 0 0.2 times V squared. And so multiply by two, divide by 0 0.2 and take the square root of that. I also get 21.9 meters per second. So either way would have been fine for that one. I think either would have been equally, equally difficult. Part E, find the final speed of the object when the displacement is 20 meters. Okay, so now I can't because I can't use the kinematic equation process for this part because now the acceleration varies, right? See, the Y value is going to change. So the force is changing, so the acceleration varies. Remember, our kinematic equations only apply when the acceleration is constant. Acceleration is not constant, can't use those kinematic equations. If you know calculus, you can use calculus for it. For, for AP Physics 1, not allowed to use calculus, so uh, let's go through the process here. So first we're going to do the work by doing the area, right? And the area, this was 48. The area from here to here, let's see, this width here is uh, 8 from 12 to 20. Height is 4. 4 times 8 is 32 divided by 2, that's 16. Okay, so the work is going to be 48 plus 16. That's the total area from there to there. And that's going to be 64 joules. The initial energy is still zero because we still start from rest, right? And then the final energy is going to be one half, zero, one half mv squared like that. And then now we're just going to use work is the change in energy, the difference between those two. So 64 is going to be one half times 0 0.2 v squared minus zero. Uh, this is 0 0.1 V squared, so then V squared is going to be 64 divided by 0 0.1, and then you just take the square root of that. So the square root of 640, basically, is going to be um, 25.3 meters per second. And notice that this is the first problem we see here, that we have to use work as change of energy. We cannot use forces in kinematics unless you use calculus, right? More advanced math, and that's always the trade-off with work and energy, is that you, if you don't want to use work and energy, you use force and kinematics, you're going to have to use more advanced, more and more, more, even more advanced math to solve the problem with work and energy. It can be very straightforward.